Okay, today we're going to draw a 3D frog. It's going to look something like this. And we'll go one step at a time. We'll just start with the eyes. And this is an example of trompe l'oeil, uh, which is a French word for trick the eye or fool the eye. Because now, instead of just two dimensions, which are height and width, now you have a third dimension, which is depth. Because when you make things really large in the foreground, when you make things really large in the foreground, they look like they're close to you. And you make things small in the background, it looks like they're further away, which creates the illusion of depth. And we're also gonna use our paper and a shadow to create the illusion of depth. And I'll show you another example of trompe l'oeil before we get started. This is called a bus wrap. And apparently, if you go to the zoo in Copenhagen, you can see one of these buses. So that is obviously not a real snake wrapped around a bus, but that is a great example of trompe l'oeil where you use artwork to trick the eye. So let's get started with a blank canvas. And I suggest that you use pencil to start with so that you can sort of sketch your, your design and then you can erase it. So I'm gonna start with the eyes about, about in the middle, little above the middle of my page, I'm gonna start the eyes. So just do a shape like this. They're kind of like headlights. So that's your eyes. And then we're going to do a line which is the underneath where it's kind of where the lid or the rim of the eye is like that and then we're going to connect them like that now we're going to bring down a line for the side of the head and i'm going to do a big upside down smile like this to represent the mouth and then after that, we're gonna connect the rest of the head and then draw the rest of the mouth with a curved line that makes a kind of a, a V shape. So start on the left side right here. And then let's make kind of a V shape because that's his mouth, but it's also, it kind of goes back and forms his throat. And then let's make his body just come down here like this and his arm that's coming out towards us comes out like this. Next, we're gonna make his big left hand which comes way out towards us. So we're gonna start with, we're gonna start and make a big shape here now this is very exaggerated this is very exaggerated because when it's coming towards you and you want it to make it look like it's in the foreground i'm uh, not happy with that shape so it should be more like that coming out towards you in the foreground it should look very large and then the next one comes out this way And I kind of made the end of his hand there. And then the next one comes up towards his eye. So if you're using a pencil, just work on that until you're happy with the shape and then erase the other lines like I'm doing. I hardly ever get it right the first time. So that is coming towards you and it has it's going to be way bigger than the other ones so now let's do his paw that comes out on this side it comes down about right here and then let's do the big one So it's it's coming towards you and it's the it's bigger than the other two. And then let's do this one. And 
and then we'll connect up here with the bottom like that and I'm going to erase a little bit of this line and now let's do the leg that comes out of the left side right there we're going to start we're going to start about here and we're going to draw it kind of curved out here because I'm looking back at the example so I'm doing this this leg right here and it comes out first I'll do the big toe Kind of like that and then the other one kind of comes towards you so it it doesn't look near as long and then the one behind it goes out like that so that's the other one and then the other leg is going to start about right there under that one it's going to start about there and it comes out like this and let's do the I think I did that a little bit too long maybe not not too much but just a little maybe and then I'm gonna do the, this one the first toe and then the second toe and then the third toe so there we have all four of those and now I'm gonna show you the second trick that we use to make it look like it's three-dimensional is we don't bring it all the way across the page but draw a line right here behind his head and then draw one right here and and then don't bring it all the way across because what we're going to do is we're going to bring it out at an angle so this is going to add to the illusion of a three-dimensional space because it's getting smaller at the back that means it's further away so now and if you do the last thing which is add a shadow and you you should just take your pencil and you should just create some shading under here and let's look back at the original picture again and there's just a shadow underneath him and kind of in the front. I'll show you mine. This is the shadow I created and usually shadows are, are cool colors, purple or blue. So I'm just, I'm just doing, using an airbrush and putting a shadow underneath him right here. And I think usually with shadows, less is more and that means I find that if I try to overdo it and get too much, it, it just it just doesn't help. It doesn't look right. So I would say with shadows, and it comes out here to the front a little bit. And you can see, if you just look at that now, and if you're taking your pencil and just put a shadow underneath where I am, and then rub it with your pencil to to make it look very subtle there's a little bit of a shadow under his toes right here and that this all helps add to the illusion so you can be doing this with your pencil the illusion that there's depth in the picture so i'm just gonna put a little more and then i'm gonna bring this one out here which looks like his It looks like his uh, hand that's sticking out in front, his paw, his foot, a little bit like that. I think I got too much right there. Like I said, less, less is more. It's better to not overdo it. So that adds to the illusion that it's, three, it's a three-dimensional space now. So, if, and then if you want to color it, I would say my advice, or what I would like you to do, is leave some areas, leave some areas white. 
like don't um, um, let me change my tool here I forgot I was using the airbrush don't color in the whole eye leave leave that area white like we've been learning with other projects where we leave a highlight on the eye and then color in and do the same thing if you're gonna do yours green or whatever color you like leave some highlights where you're gonna have not as much color leave a highlight there and leave highlights over here as well so go ahead and, and color your frog and then the other thing you can do is you can add shading and sometimes I just like to use a crosshatch method where would the shadows on him be and I, I would put some cross hatching there there'd be a shadow there there would definitely be a shadow back here on his leg and if you want to use shading with rubbing your pencil with your finger, or you can use crosshatch shading. So go ahead and work on coloring your frog and go ahead and sign your name. And this is our 3D frog. And we learned that putting something very large makes it look like it's in the foreground. And very small makes it look like it's in the background to create depth. And we used a shadow. And we also used this paper trick to make it look three-dimensional with the paper that's shorter at the back or not as wide. So I'd love to see your work and thank you for watching my 3D frog.